That was scintillating, wasn't it, from Arsenal? I mean, that really was the true definition of a delectable medley of footballing splendour. Absolutely sensational from them. Mikel Arteta got it so right, but his team, they look ruthless. They look determined. And today they announced to the world that they are here to stay with regard to this Premier League title race. Exceptional from them. And think about what Arsenal have done this year. They have won every single Premier League game that they have played this calendar year. What a moment that is for them. It really is sensational. And it's painful to me quite how good Arsenal look. Like Arsenal are the best team to watch in the Premier League, aren't they? They really are. The way that they knock the ball around, the way that Mikel Arteta allows his team to express themselves, the way that they constantly go for the jugular, the way that Bakayo Saka will charge at his fullback. On the other wing, you've got Gabriel Martinelli doing exactly the same thing. And it's just wonderful to watch. It's hateful for me to see because I certainly don't wish Arsenal well, but they are a glorious side to watch. And give me this system and this style of play that Arteta is setting his team up with over the sterile but effective system that is being employed by Pep Guardiola. Like, just think about what Arsenal have done this year. In fact, think about what Arsenal have done in the last seven days. It's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Gosh, seven days ago, they beat Arsenal. Uh, sorry, they beat Liverpool at Arsenal. They... They announced to the world seven days ago that they weren't giving up on the race. They beat a Liverpool team who felt like they were on the crest of a wave. And I said that that was Mikel Arteta's biggest result as Arsenal manager. And a lot of people disagreed with me, but let me just try and qualify that. The reason why I think it was such a huge result, and in my opinion, Mikel Arteta's biggest, is not only because of what it meant to him and to Arsenal. You know, he's had big results, maybe when they beat Manchester City. Huge result for him, huge result to Arsenal, but it didn't really change our perception of, of Manchester City or Pep Guardiola. Whereas Liverpool, off the back of Jurgen Klopp's huge announcement, they looked like a monster. They felt like a juggernaut. They felt relentless. They felt unmovable. They felt unstoppable until they landed at the Emirates. And that is why I'm saying that it's Mikel Arteta's biggest achievement and biggest result. Simply because not only what it does to him, not only what it did to the way that we look at Arsenal, not only because of the three points, but because of our perception of Liverpool. Remember, just Liverpool, off the back of that, was smashing up Chelsea. They were, they were beating everyone and it felt like, off the back of that Klopp news, they were going to go for it. Suddenly, they got stopped in their tracks, all because of the brilliance of this Arsenal team and Mikel Arteta. I mean, they were emphatic today. They really were. And I actually think that West Ham United away from home is a tricky game for Arsenal. I reckon if you're a Liverpool fan or a Man City fan, you would have been looking at the fixture today and thinking that is the very definition of a banana skin. You know, you've got to remember that West Ham United have already beaten Arsenal twice this season. And I think that you could see a world in which Arsenal could potentially come unstuck at the London Stadium against West Ham United for the third time this season. There is a world in which it could happen, but what a resounding answer from Arsenal. They did so well, and off the back of a banana skin fixture, they move onto the same goal difference as Manchester City. It's also important to remember that Arsenal have only scored three less goals than Manchester City. Remember, Arsenal, a team who desperately need a forward, a team who cannot win the league without signing a forward. They have only scored three less goals than Manchester City, a side that have Haaland and Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne and Jeremy Doku and you know, the list goes on, doesn't it? Jack Grealish, wherever you want to go, goals galore in that team. And Arsenal, a team who can't score, a team who can't win the league without signing Ivan Tony, they've only scored three goals less and crucially have the same goal difference. It really is impressive. And I think that because West Ham United was so poor, because the, they were a disgrace, let's face it, an actual disgrace, particularly for the last, what, 15 minutes of that first half where they capitulated, they embarrassed their fans. Their fans left, and I think people are being really sneery about that. I, I would have gone. I've got to put my hands up. I've been to a lot of football matches in my life, and I guarantee that I would have been gone there. Um, they didn't do the team proud. They didn't do the badge on their chest proud. And David Moyes really needs to hang his head in shame off the back of that result. But let's just remember, because of that, I think we might be seeing this as 
as an easier fixture than we should. West Ham United are a potent team. They're in the top eight of the Premier League. They've already beaten Arsenal twice this season. They are unbeaten at home in their last 10 games in all competitions. So let's just remember how big it is that Arsenal have gone there and scored six, five different goal scorers, both centre-halves scoring, which is huge, by the way. Chelsea teams, when Chelsea were good, really good, centre-half goals, man. It didn't matter whether it was David Luiz, didn't matter whether it was John Terry, didn't matter whether it was Gary Cahill, didn't matter whether it was Ricardo Carvalho, didn't matter whether it was Alex Rodrigo. Goals from your centre-halves. Six, seven a season, it's big. It's season-defining. It changes things. And Arsenal have a goal each from both centre-halves. That really is huge. Declan Rice, <laughs> naturally, of course, scores the goal of the game. Outrageous strike. Didn't celebrate. Uh, but an exceptional goal from him. Bukayo Saka, by the way, his 50th goal. 50th goal for Arsenal. He's only played just over 200 games. And he scored 50. The geezer is 22. You know, he hasn't had a particularly good season. Certainly not by his high standards. But 50 goals in just over 200 games at 22. I mean, those numbers, those numbers are unbelievable. And all of a sudden, you're looking. Cliff Baston, Ian Wright, Thierry Henry. You know, he is scoring goals at a serious rate. And it's outrageously impressive. But I think the biggest thing to take from this, you know, Bukayo Saka is always going to score goals in the way that Gabriel Martinelli is always going to score goals. OK, they struggled earlier this season, but they're really good players. They're incredibly young. Blips happen, particularly to young players. And that's all it was. Declan Rice, always going to be able to score Big goals, and he's really added that to his game since he's gone there. You know, I always thought that Declan Rice was an exceptional player. I thought he was going to be a brilliant signing, and I think it was the signing of the summer, even before he played. We knew how good he was. We knew that he was ready to compete at the very top, and Declan Rice is an elite-level footballer. But he's kind of reimagined himself. He's changed from the player that he was at West Ham. He's excellent at West Ham. Well worth the money that Arsenal paid. In fact, it's now looking like it was a bargain because he's added goals galore to his game. Last-minute winners, 35-yard screamers against his former club. It takes a very particular character to do things like that. Really, really huge. But the biggest thing that you can take from Arsenal and the way that they're scoring goals, it's none of the above. It's the fact that they are so lethal at set pieces. It was a Jose Mourinho style. It was a Jose Mourinho trick to make sure that you are that good at set pieces, to make sure that you are always a threat from set pieces. And Arsenal have now scored the most goals from corners of any team in the Premier League. They have scored 11 goals and they were simply scintillating today. They were, they were devastating. It's really annoying for me to admit it, but they are simply the best team to watch, at least in the league. It's going to take something spectacular from them to win the league. It really is. It's I don't want to say it's beyond them because it's not beyond them. They can win the league. It's just going to be so difficult when Manchester City are who they are. And Liverpool are obviously relentless. But there is a world this Arsenal team can do it. And what an achievement it will be. I think anybody that was doubting their challenge, you know, a lot of people thought that it was impossible at the beginning of the season. I certainly didn't. I... I thought that it was impossible off the back of those two London derbies that they lost consecutively. Losing away to Fulham off the back of losing at home to West Ham, I didn't think it was possible. But I also didn't think the form that they have shown this season. The way that they have played this season, uh, this year, sorry, this calendar year, I didn't think it was possible. They have won every Premier League game. And when you look at their fixtures now, if you include today, I think out of the next five games, they need 15 points. 15 out of 15. They've already got three. If they win the next four, starting at Burnley in their next fixture, what a title race we have. They're playing with confidence. They're oozing sauce. <laughs> they, they are simply brilliant. And do you know what? I think Martin Odegaard needs to be compared to the very best. I really do. I think he's just outrageously good. There was a moment where he was completely on his own. You've got to find this moment. About 70 minutes into the game, I think. El Nenny was definitely on. Right, about 70 minutes in, Odegaard picks a ball up. Nowhere really to go. We know that he's not especially quick. Three West Ham United players surround him. And he doesn't do anything. He's simply, nothing clever. Does something sublime. But he doesn't do anything 
particularly tricky. He doesn't have to flip-flap his way through or do a load of step-overs. He doesn't have to turn into Ronaldinho. He simply uses the grace and the fluidity in his own body to just drift past players. Goes to play it back, just faints one way, faints the other way, faints one way, faints the other way, totally fluid, almost innocuous. Doesn't look like a big shift of, of his weight. Beats three, gets to the byline, pulls it back for El Nenny. Do you know what? I'm going to be completely honest. The game was over. Arsenal had the three points. When I saw that happen, I kind of wanted El Nenny to ping it in just because the, the masterful uh, brilliance that we saw from Odegaard will be forgotten if the ball ultimately doesn't end up in the back of the net. If it ends up in the back of the net, it's on a compilation for life. The best assist that, you know, it goes down as one of the best because it was ultimately a pass back from El Nenny straight into the arms of the West Ham keeper. It kind of will be forgotten. But if you have the game recorded or whatever, seriously, man, have a look at the way that Odegaard just uses his body. It's it's just brilliant. It really is exceptional, exquisite ability. Um, well worth a look. From a West Ham United perspective, I thought they were a disgrace, a, a, an actual disgrace. I think David Moyes should hang his head in shame. It's not the first time that a David Moyes team has conceded six against Arsenal. I remember his Everton side. I think it was 6-1. Might have been first day of the season, if I remember rightly. Arsenal went to Goodison, scored six. David Moyes, obviously, the manager. I've said that West Ham United need a new manager. I get a lot of stick when I say it. But it's performances like today that make me think they need a new direction. It's performances like when they went to Anfield in the Cup that make me think that they need to go in a new direction. And remember, West Ham United won silverware last year. So they should thank David Moyes and use their newfound status as a team that wins silverware, as a team that compete in Europe, to go and be a little bit progressive and a little bit ambitious with their managerial appointment. They're never going to have a better chance to get a top manager in than when they're playing in the Europa League off the back of winning European silverware. This is going stale for them. They look terrible today. Um, and the fans, for the first time since that win in Prague, it felt like they were turning. Leaving early, I have absolutely no issue with it. But remember, it was 12 months ago. They were away at Craven Cottage in the, uh, in the away game at Fulham with a Moyes out banner. It all changed off the back of Prague. But I think they really do need a, a shake-up at least. Thank you so much for watching this video. I uh, really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do me a favour. Please give it a like. Please click subscribe. And I will see you all a bit later. Uh, we're going to be reviewing another game. Kicking off any minute now. In a bit.